Hello, as you might have seen from my other videos, I am using the blend settings quite often. In today's video, I will share three awesome ways you can use blend settings. So let's get started. The first tip I want to share is applying blend settings to live filters or adjustment layers. A perfect example for this is sharpening. By adjusting the blend settings of a sharpening filter, you can use it to remove it from lighter areas, like the sky, where you normally do not need any sharpening. So let's use this example image and create a high pass filter with a high radius and set its blend mode to linear light. This sharpens the whole image. If we zoom in, you can see it also, as expected, sharpened the sky. However, by sharpening the sky, we added noise to it. We don't want that. We actually wanted to sharpen the rock. Now, if we change the blend settings to this live filter and lower the effect on the brighter areas, you can see that the filter does not affect the sky anymore. The darker areas, like the rock, are still sharpened. Let me zoom in to another area of the sky and show you the difference. Similarly, you can also apply this to adjustment layers, which brings us to our second tip, using the blend settings with the channels. Let me demonstrate this. I'm going to add a vibrance adjustment and crank all the values up, just for demonstration purposes. As you see, the effect is way too much. Well, actually, it's not so bad as I expected. It gives the image a bit of a surrealistic retro look. Anyway, if we now go to the blend settings of this adjustment, we can modify the power of this vibrance per channel. So in this case, I can modify the blend rate per channel in order to have it applied more to the blues. Keep in mind that almost all pixels have a red, green or blue value. So making changes in one channel will most likely affect all the image. Let me give another example by adding a recolor adjustment. Now let's change the blend range so it gets a bit of an evening look. To demonstrate the power of using channels in the blend settings, I'm going to add a mask and copy it so we can compare the differences. So, on the right side, I'm going to reset the master blend and change per channel the blend range so we can see the difference. So in the red, the recoloring does not affect the blues as much. If we go to the green channel, the result is very similar with the master, which is a signal that the green is a very neutral color in this image. Finally, on the blue, you can see that the blue is very dominant and the recoloring is very strong. We can use this information to recolor the image very creatively. Like in this case, I can recolor the darker areas of the image without affecting the sky by removing the effect from the blue highlights and modifying the other channels accordingly. To get a better understanding what is happening or what areas you can target with the blend rages, you can also have a look at the channels panel. Here you can clearly see what is considered bright or dark per channel. By adjusting the blend ranges per channel, you can get amazing results, which would be hard to replicate in other methods. Let's move to our third and final tip with blend settings, and this is a favorite of mine, using blend settings with vignettes. Vignettes can be a powerful tool to draw attention to a subject. Like in this photo, we want the viewer to focus on the girl and not on the stairs or the background. By adding a vignette, we can achieve this. However, a default vignette always feels very unnatural to me, a bit overwhelming. However, if we use the blend settings, 
it becomes much more natural. Let me demonstrate this. First, let's create a quick and dirty vignette by using a black fill, which we will mask with a white, large, soft brush. Now, we get the attention of the girl, but we also killed the image. To fix this, use our blend settings and have the vignette only apply on the dark areas. Whoa, what a difference. Let me show the difference. The image with the default vignette and now the image with the blend ranges applied. I think this is really mind blowing because you don't see the vignette anymore, but it is still there and has the same effect. Just amazing. You can play with the opacity to control the effect or change the blend ranges for a more powerful look. I hope you liked this video and thanks for watching.